Hello, how's it going? It's Frank Anaya, and what a pleasure it is to be here with you talking about Obsidian. You probably watched a dozen Obsidian tutorials, right? But perhaps you feel lost, overwhelmed, and like everyone else, there's just a lot of ways that people are explaining this, and it just doesn't stick. Honestly, most tutorials teach you how to build the perfect vault, but nobody actually tells you how this works in real life. So what I'm going to be doing today is showing you how I'm building my Obsidian system. First, messy, honest, starting from scratch, and we're going to be doing it live. And before you think about this and go even further, this is part of a series where we're going to go dive into how to build Obsidian. And guess what? We're not touching Obsidian in this video. What? Here's the deal. I'm going to explain the thinking that most people skip when it comes to Obsidian. And not only will you understand the thinking, you'll be able to see and determine how you can benefit from it. Because at the beginning, rather than spending a lot of time, which is what most people do, it's important that you identify if Obsidian is for you. And then you can actually build a simple system that scales with you and compounds over time versus something that's just useless because you spent way too much time and didn't get the result. Does that sound good? All right, so let's do it. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to be showing you the thinking because part of what most people skip, like I mentioned, is designing this thinking. So let's talk about it. Obsidian. Obsidian is remarkably new in an era. I think it came out in 2020. What we want to do here with Obsidian is actually consider, like I said, the use case, the why, the what, the how, and then ultimately at the end, the what's next. It's simple, but most people don't do it. So where does Obsidian fit in? Well, let's talk about it. If you work and you have a lot of notes, Obsidian's for you. If you're a student, Obsidian's for you. But possibly one of the things you're asking here, especially at the beginning, is what is Obsidian? Does that make sense? I want to illustrate this by talking a little bit about Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word is a text processor that came out. A lot of people understand it. And, you know, for the longest time, it worked. If you had a couple notes, everything is good, everything is dandy. But what happens to you when you have 100 plus notes? At that point, the simple system starts to expand and expand and expand to the point where there's nothing you can do and you need to learn how to organize it. Or I don't know if you've ever come across this problem where you're scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and it just goes on and on and on and on and you haven't been able to see what it's about. What Obsidian does, it's a definition. It's a note-taking app. It's a note-taking app that's able to connect one idea to the next, to the next. And the remarkable power of it <clears throat> is this idea of linking. But you're linking. So if we were to take, for instance, the same thoughts that you had here, the old technology, let's call it that, and now we can bring it into a new technology, which is what you're seeing over here. Let's erase that guy. And because it's obsidian, guess what? It gets the purple. Well, it's more like a dark purple. But anyway, you get the idea. Obsidian now makes it so that you can connect this dot to this dot to this dot. You're able to take that same previously orphaned, kind of alone and sad to a connected elements of nodes. But you might be thinking, okay, this is the way to abstract. Bear with me. I know. I get you. I understand you. When you can take your ideas that up until here have lived in your awesome head, and you can start putting them into some kind of external note-taking system, and I might use a little bit of the lingo, but help me. But make sure in the comments if this is feeling too abstract. Take those ideas, put them into actual forms that make it tangible. Now, guess what? The problem of 
being sad because no one knows who you are and there's like money opportunities missed and maybe relationships with other people can't happen because everything is locked inside of you. You can open the door, so to speak, to knowledge. And that's the knowledge that starts to externalize itself as a form of thinking. These notes, my friend, which I'm just kind of writing here, but you get the idea, start to connect to each other. And as a result, this leads to projects which are better organized, saving you the time, saving you the money, saving you the idea hassle, right? Because everything is starting to take shape and form. We go from all this to having something you can output that's nice and clean, that's arranged, that's easy to find, easy to connect. And what's the difference between the old way of doing things and the new way? Obsidian. Now, if I'm talking so much about Obsidian, you might be asking, why haven't you shown it? Why aren't you starting there? The reason I'm not starting in Obsidian is because most people don't take the time to evaluate a few key set of questions. Namely, what is the tool? Everything begins with understanding the tool. Understanding if there's a benefit, if there's a payoff, which is kind of connected to it, and if there is uh, a cost, the cost-benefit analysis, right? What scenarios? Notice this keyword here, relevant. Yes, my friend, relevant to you matter the most. I think my camera's deciding to. Relevance. If it's not relevant, why do it, right? Plain and simple. So relevant means I can use now. Followed with a third question, which is, what simple system but one idea can I use? Ask yourself these questions. What is the tool? So you probably can find other tutorials that explain to you what Obsidian is, all the features, features, etc. But the scenarios, the way you do that, friend, is come up with a list, a list of one, two, three, just things and ideas. Put them on paper, get them out of your head and start thinking about your day-to-day -day interactions. Another way of thinking about these scenarios is consider this as the idea of jobs to be done. Okay, understand your scenarios, understand that, and then your simple system. Simple system at its core is you're not focused about installing plugins. So no plugins, my friend. I'm a big plugin user, but I don't start with plugins. Like I said, I start with the thinking. No plugins, very minimal. I'm saying minimal customizing. Your whole point should be to start connecting ideas and to just get in the practice of building the habit. Habits, hobbits, habits of capturing. Start capturing, start letting these ideas flow. And then again, as I had it over here, you go from this sad person with all this potential, all this heartbreak, all these missed opportunities that just seem to get bigger and bigger and bigger, like all these walls, we start cutting that down. Because then is how you move forward. You get unblocked. The problem with a lot of the current space is people show you how to set up these perfect systems without really showing you the thinking that got them to the system. Before you even enter into the space of PKM, it's important you understand and you start to develop the idea of the thinking of PKM. And the way I do that is I have this system I call the inner authority. So maybe you're thinking like, how the heck does this even connect to Obsidian? Well, let's break it down in simple terms. There's you as a person. You need some kind of system that's not inside of you, but rather outside of you. So I'm going to call it like an outer system that can take your ideas and it can transform them 
into outputs. Think about your ideas as your form of inputs. So this could be conversations you have, bits and pieces of information that again have been made tangible and now you can actually do something with them. But what happens, most of us, like I said, it's the problem is we have it inside of our heads. And we completely disregard your identity. Who am I? And the key here are your values, your preferences, your stories. Let's look a little further. You've got your experiences. All of these, my friends, are a small little selection of everything you can be. But you see, the problem today is this has a priority. How to use Obsidian. And I'm going to be telling you and giving you that tangible in other videos. But not first. This should not be first. Because when it is, here's the real problem. Here's the, here's the insight that, again, who am I? I probably should have started with my credibility. I've been helping people build second brains. I was one of Tiago Forte's top mentors. Five years in the making, PKM, productivity. I've done a lot of this thinking already. And what I see by the most part is most people spend time building systems. Again, outer systems, nothing wrong with it. But they build without knowing why they're building. They build because someone else is saying, use this plugin, use this feature. And off you go, chasing and trying to understand and pursue of what in reality shouldn't have been done in the first place. You're building a system that someone else will use. You think it's your future self. It's not. Because after you spend all this time, after you've gone three, six, 12 months down the road trying to build this gap, you still feel empty to answer the questions that are so simple, like, who am I? What is this about with my values? What are my preferences? What is my lived experience? And ultimately, what am I here to do? These questions, the identity systems, or what I'm calling the inner authority system, is based on this lack of scarcity, lack of abundance, lack of lack mindset, which approaches you as a person that's broken and that doesn't understand or can really benefit from organizing and maximizing the power inside of your knowledge. Messy notes are progress. Linking is progress. Having questions that are unanswered is progress. Your system, not mine. I'm not here to help you copy step by step, though I do understand the benefit in this, especially the beginning stages where you want to model. Modeling is great, but always ask yourself, what is the thinking behind this? And so when you understand that, when you wish and you know, again, the questions that I've given you here, what's the tool? You can read all the features and the specs there. But ask yourself, is this tool going to help me reach my goals? Is this tool actively a resource that I can use to develop my thinking, to use for my scenarios? Take that, maximize it with the tool, the scenarios, and building the simple system. Simple system meaning one, two, three, little steps, one at a time. That, my friend, is the way that you start to approach the thinking behind Obsidian, as you start developing your own ability to know how to use these tools and not drown in the problem that faces many people today, which is trying to make sense of the world, but going about it in someone else's way. If this is resonating, if you like it, hit me up, let me know. I'm excited to share more and we'll talk soon. All right, hope you like this. In the next couple of videos, I'm actually going to move beyond this kind of more philosophical problem thinking space, which is kind of what we've done to start to identify solutions, right? So we go from problem, we create a solution. And once you've created a solution, I'm going to start giving you the framework so that you can implement your own. Believe me, this feels low. It feels counterintuitive. You think it can't be this way, but this is how you go faster. And if you've stuck with me to the end, it's because something here resonates. And that, my friend, is you taking agency and stepping into the sense of permission that comes when you start living and building according to your best strengths. All right, stay true, stay good. We'll talk soon.